we find it helpful, the normal um, format for this is that we run through the test. I've got your sheet here at the side of me, so I'll talk through um, the marks that you got, why you got them, explain sort of what the judges are looking for when they're marking your test and give you some ideas for things you can work on at home um, to help you improve between now and your next test. So you'll get this video recording and you'll also get um, a plan uh, via email which will, will um, sort of formalise everything that we talked about in the video. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Um, you're just about to ride your centre line, so I'm just going to um, put the video back and uh, we'll get going. So straight away, so I'm just going to pause the video and just let you watch that back. So make sure when you're trotting around the edge that you're trotting a little bit more forward. I'm going to start right from the beginning, just let you watch that, um, with, and explain to you the scales of training. Um, you might have heard of this already, um, but just in case that you haven't, um, then we're both on the same page. So the scales of training are used... Um, worldwide through dressage and it's particularly relevant um, in judging and how the judge decides what marks to give you but it's also really useful um, I'll let you watch your test while I'm talking um, it's also really useful for when you're schooling at home so if you can understand the scales of training and your horse is perhaps um, not understanding something or not seeming to perform something how you want or perhaps you're just wondering about how to progress to the next level once you understand the scales of training then you can really start to put your own ideas into practice rather than needing someone to say you know do this exercise do that exercise um, so the scales of training start with rhythm so this is referring to the footfalls and how even your horse is in each pace through the footfalls, which your horse is actually, you know, very, very good at. Um, watching the test through, I thought both the walk, trot, and I imagine hopefully the canter if she sure jumped, um, were very rhythmical, and that's a big tick. So you've got a massive basic there. Um, what I would say is sometimes it's a little bit steady, um, but I can understand that you are keeping her that steady for the balance. So moving her forward is sort of the next progression. You've done the basics here. You've got her balanced, relaxed, nice, and um, use the steady rhythm to do that and teach her to take the weight behind a little bit. But now it's time to start gradually, and I mean very gradually with your trainer's help because you've been doing a great job here, um, to start eking her a little bit more forward. Um, the next thing then is on the scales of training is suppleness. So suppleness means her ability to perform the movements with ease, how elastic she is. Um, and obviously this develops as they um, progress with their training. Um, but it's something that we're looking for through the movements. You know, is she bending around your leg? Um and normally if a horse is lacking suppleness, then the rhythm will falter. So when you're working through the scales of training, if you can understand that if something higher up the scale is not there quite as much as it should be, then the thing below might be the thing that suffers. So we're just watching the free walk, actually. So where she's a little bit hesitant to stretch down with confidence and suppleness into that bit, then she, she sort of slows down a little bit. She doesn't quite stay stretching through, yeah? That's just a little example while we're watching. So the next thing then, once you've got suppleness, is contact. And she actually, for me, looks very accepting of the bit. Um, you've got a lovely, nice, soft contact. And she does come above the bit at times, but that comes from the loss of balance rather than anything wrong. She's not fussing in her mouth. Um, you're just keeping a lovely consistency there. So I wouldn't worry about the contact at all. She's built on the bit. So like there, you see, it's just a loss of balance rather than a, an argument with the hand. So I would definitely just concentrate on the rhythm and the suppleness. And the next one I'm going to talk about, which is impulsion. Now, what this means is a desire to move forward off your leg and to stay in front of your leg. Now, at the minute, sometimes she drops slightly behind the leg. Um, 
you know, and then that causes a little bits of loss of balance like there, you see, yeah, we just wanted a bit more leg. Can you see around that turn? If I just play that back for you. Here, she just starts to drop off your leg. So you need a little bit more leg there so that she could keep stretching through around that corner and not lose her balance and stuff on this, okay? Um, the final one then, after those, we don't need to worry about. So just watch the end of your test. I'll just pause it there for you. So once you've got the impulsion, then you can start to think about straightness and collection, but we're not going to worry about that. So for you, it's rhythm, suppleness, contact and impulsion. And I think the main ones for you are to focus on the rhythm, the suppleness and the impulsion and just keep maintaining that nice consistent contact that you've got, okay? So that's just so you can understand the kind of things that we're looking for um, and it very much explains these in the collectives at the bottom of your test um, which we will just have a quick look at now while we're on the subject so you got um, yeah seven for your rhythm 6.5 for the suppleness 6.5 for the contact um, seven for um, the test has been strange on my phone here. One second. Yeah, for rider um, correctness, which was great. And then for position, um, you've got a seven. So like I say, but I think the 6.5 for the contact is just coming from those moments when she's um, throwing the head up, which has come from a loss of balance. So don't overthink that. Just focus on your rhythm and focus on progressing her through the movements and starting to push her a little bit more forward okay we're going to watch from the beginning then and discuss each movement in a little bit more detail okay so center line you got an eight and it said very straight so um let's have a look at that So you can just see how that the, the head's wobbling a little bit up and down. And that's where I'd really, you know, if I was stood there on the ground, I'd be saying, come on, put a bit more leg on. It's important, though, that you understand when I'm saying put a bit more leg on, that I don't mean I want you to get quicker. I just want her to be slightly stronger from the leg into the hand so that it almost feels like she's taking the rein out of your hand not that I want you to actually speed up. So just to clarify, when I'm saying forward, I mean more energy off the leg, not quicker. And that would help her to really be able to get, you know, a nine or, a, you know, even a ten for that centre line because the head would then be still. She's already very straight. You've done a really good job setting the corner up. You put your outside leg on there to ride the turn. This is a little wobble look through the head. And she just needs that bit more connection. Um, so next we're going on to circle right uh, 20 metres. And you've got a 7 for this. Um, and the comment is on the outline here. Um, personally, I think for her level of training, um, the outline's absolutely fine. I wouldn't want her any rounder there, actually. Um, there she could be, yeah. So that's where the comments come from. So let's go back. Um here but again all you need to do there is just press that inside leg press that inside rein and just keep the leg on so she doesn't lose her consistency um next we've got the walk transition so what i need you to do with these walk transitions is teach her to keep stepping through and this is all coming from that forwardness if you watch she just sort of plops into walk rather than um you know, really stepping through into the walk. So what I need you to practice, and it might sound a little bit elaborate, um, but is a little exercise that I call on and back. And this is just to teach your horse how to respond better to the half halt so that she stays forward in the downward transition and she doesn't take the downward aid as, oh, I'm just going to stop. She takes it as a half halt and a, a transition rather than a slow down, okay? So... What I need you to do is practice going from your working trot into a sitting trot 
where you just give a half hold and you slightly bring her back, but you expect the rhythm to stay exactly the same. So it still be one, two, one, two, one, two, even though you have slightly shortened the pace, okay? And you can do that a few times and then eventually ask for walk um, so that you're practising that she must keep hind leg underneath her in the walk transition. And if you look through her ears, make sure that the pole stays the highest point and she doesn't drop the pole and drop off your leg. So here you'd think, right, you know, if you were practising, sit, 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 nearly walk, then trot on again. Yeah, and then obviously not in your test when you're practising. So that she learns, and what that teaches the horse is that there's a half halt and then, oh, I go forward again. And it's just a great way of teaching them to keep the hind leg active and underneath them. And then you'd go off again, yeah? And then, you know, practice that a few times until she's sort of, oh, I'm ready to go all the time. The other thing I'd say, maybe do a few more, just one or two more walk steps there so it's just a little more established, okay? Don't rush out of the walk. It's three to five steps. Good. Okay, so the next movement then. Um, yep, yeah, is your circle. So you're coming around. Yes, yeah, so you can see she wants to be more forward. She's a little bit laboured in the rhythm. See, she showed good good suppleness there. Um, but she's just struggling to keep her balance because she just wants a little bit more wrapping around the leg. You're sitting up really nice and tall. And when you're practising at home, like that little moment there where she just loses her balance, just wrap, go a little sitting trot so you can get that strong leg on. Again, not quicker, just more leg to hand so that she's connected, okay? Got the walk transition again. So same thing. It's quite abrupt, yeah. And the pole's dropped. Can you see how the pole lowers in the walk transition? You really need to focus. Look through her ears. Press your leg on and imagine her withers coming up to you as you ask her to walk, so that she doesn't lower her head and fall on the far hand. Okay? Because then you see you got that resistance when you ask for trot, um, because. She had to sort out the fact she was on the forehand before she could trot. So you actually gave, just there, a really good half halt there. You put the weight back behind. But that aid needed to come before the walk transition. So here you should be saying, half halt, put your weight behind, and then walk. But the big half halt came here, rather than before you asked for walk, okay? And then you got that resistance. Okay, so we're looking at her on the circle. Yeah, there's a nice bend here, to be fair. I think you did a really good job. And um, yeah, you got 7.5 for that movement. It was nice, very nice. Can you see it's just slightly labouring and it's causing that head bob. It's before the walk. You must ride more forward in the walk, okay? Yeah, and then the head bobs, the head lowers, there your half halt should have come. And then you ask to walk. I'm just going to pause the video and explain something for you. So when you're riding, the horse's weight, this is getting a little technical now, but hopefully this will help you understand what I'm saying about this walk transition, should always be on the outside hind, okay? Where your horse's weight is at the minute is on her inside far. Can you see how she's just riding on that inside front leg, tipping almost, tilting to the inside, okay? It should be on the outside hind. Now to correct that, what you need to do here is press your inside leg and take a half halt on your outside rein, a little bit of weight if you need to on your outside seat bone. And that's what's going to allow her to get off the forehand. And that really, really needs to happen here so that you can get that weight on the outside hind before you ask for your walk transition. Do you see how she really just fell onto that shoulder in the walk transition? I'll let you watch that full speed. So watch, see where the weight is there. So 
So you're turning too much with the inside hand and then the weight is on the front inside leg rather than the outside hind leg. And I'm going to replay that all the way back so you can watch the other walk transition because the same thing happens. So here she's on, she's not quite as much on the inside this rein, but she's certainly not quite on the outside. There she was when you made that half halt. And don't, you did really well there. Never be worried about a little slightly ugly moment when you're training her because when you put that weight behind, she went, oh, 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 that's a bit hard. But you actually, if you look, yes, there was a throw of the head, but the balance through the body sat so much more on the hind leg. So you've just not got to worry about the head and just focus on the weight coming behind. So there she's, this way she does really lean on that inside shoulder. So you've got to be extra careful on this rein. So here you should have done your half halt, put the weight behind, then kept the leg on. Couple of strides of sitting. I really think you should start to implement a couple of strides of sitting before the walk. Um, you are allowed to do that in your test because you're not going sitting or rising. A, a little bit of sitting trot just here would have been just preparing her so that you could grow up, lift your belly button, squeeze your legs and ride her up to the walk, not down to the walk, forward down transitions. And then you scored really well then, so there's a change of rain. Now. Okay, so. She's got a gorgeous walk, hasn't she? Look at that over track. Um, when you're training her, um, just the reins are quite loose there. Remember, it's free walk on a long rein, not free walk on a loose rein. So you just want to... When you're training her, only give her the amount of rain that she'll take. Obviously, perfect 10 is that she will take the rain out of your hand right down so that you've got the buckle. But the minute she's not ready to do that, to try not to let the rain go too saggy. She sees she's good there. Um, and then when the rain ends up saggy, just take a bit of rain back. You can widen your hands a bit to do that so that she is learning to just always keep that consistent spongy feeling to her mouth and she doesn't end up with um, loose rain. And that takes a lot of practice, time at home. I know it's boring, but you need to be... Um, I'm going to just pause because I want to talk about what just happened. So I know it's boring going through the free walk, but you need to practice at home so that if you need to widen your hand, lift your hand, and just literally just follow the bit and ride her forward into it until she learns on that long rein to just follow whatever rein you've given her. Right, now watch what happens around this corner. There's too much fiddling on the inside rein. She's on that front end again. So we did a good half halt onto your outside seat bone, get the weight on her hind leg, because then she ends up throwing that shoulder out. I'm at the angle to see it there. What a lovely walk she has got. I'd be interested to know how old she is actually, Laurie, because she's a lot of potential to do really well. Gorgeous. Yeah, and that's the, the upward transition. Um, you rode that really well, actually. I know she fussed a bit, but you stayed consistent. You kept your leg on. Um, what you can do at home with that on and back exercises, like there, when she resists that walk transition, I would just stay sitting trot with my leg and my hand there until she relaxes into it and then go rising. So you need to make use when you're practising, not in the test obviously, but at home. So there you'd go sit, 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 and then and thou rise, yeah? So that you're just really teaching her to just be super consistent through the rain. Yeah, that was nice. Now you're a bit more forward on that change of rain, actually. It was really good. Yeah, you scored an eight. It was fab. That's the rhythm. That's what I want you to come in with. One, two, one, two. It's just a little bit more forward. That looked really nice. Good.
Yeah. And don't worry too much about the fact she fussed in the Hulk because that is just coming from... It could be that she anticipated that a little bit. Um, I don't know whether she's that type. It did look like she just backed off before you asked her, knew what was coming a little bit. Um, obviously, if you were schooling that, um, you would just walk her on again and come down the centre line a couple of times and practice this. Just going down the centre line, turn left, go down the centre line, turn right. Make sure she feels absolutely straight down the centre line. So at any point, you could you could essentially move her left, you could move her right. It's completely straight. And then every now and again, do your walk transition and practice doing the three to five strides of walk over X and trotting on again. And what that will teach her is that she must stay forward in the halt and the walk down the centre line. So you come down, three to five strides, walk, trot on again, and then you once she gets good at that, then you do the halt. So coming down, walk, a couple of strides, halt, walk, trot off again. Um, and although you won't be asked to sort of halt on the centre line at this level, it's a really good exercise to teach her that the halt isn't the end of the test. The halt could be the start of the test. It could be just halfway through your schooling. So you're just putting these good habits into her schooling. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I think the ma majority of the points that I want you to take home are that she's got to be more forward, full stop, particularly in her upwards and downwards transitions, and to understand how to use your half halt before the movements to prepare her by sitting the weight on the outside hind before you ask her to perform a new movement. And remember, she's learning, so a walk transition is a difficult movement for her. She needs you to prepare it just as much as um, a more advanced horse might need you to prepare a shoulder in and then even more advanced, you know, might need you to prepare um, for something more complicated, okay? And, you know, even a corner needs you to prepare for her so that she goes in, in and out of every corner the best, okay? So I'm going to write that up all for you as well. Send that over. If you've got any questions, please drop me a message and we can arrange a phone call um, so that you can hopefully get the most out of this session or just ping me an email if anything needs explaining a little more detail um, and very exciting I hope to see you again bye for now